Hey there, so today we have uh, sort of an unboxing and just a little beer chat. This might be my most anticipated beer release of the year. I mean, you know I'm a Bourbon County guy, so maybe that is, but and also I really like this year Nevada Oktoberfest, so maybe that is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but this is very exciting. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is the Fan Favorites Pack from Sierra Nevada. So these are some just old money beers. Like these are just beers that um, sort of like have a little bit of um, history or a big history a lot of people big history with me specifically so first off let's go through the beers and we'll talk about uh the beers individually uh this is really just slave like let's let's unload a little bit of information about the beers before i like unload you guys with a review that has like way too much content for it so uh what's in here um let's go this way hop hunter ipa so uh this is a pretty special one again these recipes are all i don't know specifically the nooner but these are all about a decade old like this was like i think I think the Ruthless Ride was a new recipe when I got into craft beer. So we're talking about like 2012, right? And we're in 2023. So like a decade. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so these are older recipes. And throughout the years, they've actually like released them again, but they've never been consistent because, I mean, I can't imagine like these like year round beers. Like obviously, like they were, they're crushing it with the um, Hazel of Things series and then like these um, other like new recipe IPAs that they're doing. But uh, it's really nice to revisit the classics. And I've actually reviewed a bunch of these throughout the years. Like, um, this one, I think I reviewed like three years ago, four years ago. Uh, this one, I did a blind beers maybe five years ago. This one I've done like old, old, I believe a long time ago, like, you know, almost a decade ago. And then like maybe a few years ago, um, this one, same, almost a decade ago, decade ago. And then a few years ago. So now they're back back. Like, I, I don't think these were consistently re uh, produced for a couple of years. So the fan favorites, people want them back, they shouted from back and let's just dig through the beer. So, um, hot punter. This is pretty special, um, all the recipe. And then it, the cool thing about this beer is that it uses um, hop oil extract. So it's uh, pretty interesting. It's like, so uh, generally when people um, talk about hop extract, we're talking about just like, it's adding bitterness, like 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 an extract, um, concentrated form to add bitterness. This is for aromatic. So there, there's a hop oil um, extract to add to this beer. Uh, this is Ruthless Rye. So just a sort of American um, rye IPA. So bringing rye to it, I imagine there's a little bit of crystal malt in here too. So sort of just like, why IP is not really a style? I mean, like, uh, I think they actually, so this specifically was around and Ruthless Rye from Founders. And then when I went to the Founders anniversary, like, wow, I'm really dating myself now, um, six, seven years ago, um, they actually pulled it away from draft because A, it wasn't selling fast enough. And then B, it was a beer that had like a lower shelf life. So they just like, were like, All right, like this beer is so significantly impacted by um, like shelfness. So we're just going to make it draft only. And obviously, like, draft beer can generally sell faster than, not always a rule, but a uh, uh, keg beer could ideally sell faster than, you know, cases of beer just sitting in a warehouse. But then again, the kegs sit in the warehouse too, so who knows. Uh, but Ruthless Rye, we're talking, we're talking about uh, Ruthless Rye, not, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait. Why is it Founders Red Rye? Red Rye, right? It was called Red Rye, Founders Red Rye? Anyway. There was also a uh, Bear Republic rye beer, but you guys post console if you guys remember more like rye IPAs or anything. Uh, they're not really a thing anymore, so it's cool to see this beer back. Nooner, just a classic German Pilsner. Um, I think they're relying on, um, sorry, I'm going to punch my palate, um, the Summerfest lager, and then the Oktoberfest lager, and then they stopped that for a minute. And then they were just really not really a lager guy for a minute, right? Like, yeah. So it's nice to see this classic kind of uh, American take on German Pilsner back. Especially from Sierra Nevada, and then this is flip side. This is um, their take on red IPA. So these are slightly adjacent because, like, I mean, rye has some color to it, but like they're going to look pretty amber. So this is specifically their red IPA, and I will say uh, uh, this is cheated a little bit. I just had this fresh in New York City at the Grand Delancey, like my favorite beer bar in the country. Um, I guess the world done. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this beer was shock, shocking, shocking. Like, uh, just to turn on the accent for no reason. Shulkin. Um, so freaking good. It was the cheapest beer they had on the entire draft list. I mean, Sierra Nevada. And that might be one of the best beers I have all year. Um, I think I did a video talking about some of that, but shockingly good. Like, so freaking good. A freaking red IPA, amber ale, whatever you want to call it. Uh, flip side. Uh, so I'm excited about this one, but I'm excited about the bunch. So just um, old school stuff. Obviously... Uh, this is produced at Mills River. I mean, I'm in Florida. I mean, like Mills, Mills River in North Carolina is like probably 
six, seven hours from me. So they're obviously not brewing it in Chico and sending it all the way out here. But uh, this is just a cool pack. Like th there's so many memories of these beers. And then there's like literally multiple reviews. It's like two reviews of this one. There's one review of this one. There's like two reviews of this one. There's like two reviews of this guy. Um, I was just looking at the, like the category of like uh, a catalog of like reviews. And I was like, oh, wow, I forgot. Like I reviewed all these beers multiple times. And obviously, these are accessible and they're classic that I really want to uh, revisit. I will say I bought this. Uh, basically, the average is less than three months, less than three months, less than three months. Oh, wow. So the cool thing about these is that, A, you guys can probably understand, logistically making these is a complete headache. The goal is to make beer, package it, label it, put it in one six pack, and get it out. Well, the easiest, obviously, just put all the beer in the kegs and just send it out, right? But if you want to do the bottling thing, cool. But now you got to schedule four different brews and then have these boxes and you got to like line them up and put them in. Like it's, it's a complete, like, right? Like, could you imagine like bottle? Okay, we, okay. Today we bottled this beer. Okay. Well, let's put it in six packs and put it in our truck. No, 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 no. We got to wait to package these other guys. And that like the logistic headache. And obviously um, with that, like the pricing is still pretty good. Like this was cheaper than two, four, uh, two six packs, which was like, Nineteen twenty dollars. Two six packs ideally would cost you like twenty four dollars. So still getting break for buying twelve beers, but the logistic headache sort of like you know cool cool. Um, this is about three months old, and they're all within a day, which is pretty crazy. Three months old is actually not easy. Right under three months, so we're about eight weeks. Or no no sorry sorry sorry. Three week uh, three months. <laughs> I'm not being stupid. Uh, three months about twelve weeks. This is like eleven weeks old. So right under three months, but um, it was kept cold. From what I understand, like I, I bought it uh, um, uh, at Publix, and Publix is pretty good. Like everything's kept cold the whole time, ideally. And then Publix, like the important thing when you buy beer, is just find places that you f like, especially for a beer like this. Like if you go to a specific craft beer store, ideally they rotate the the, the, the product. Like a Total Wine, like you know, a graveyard for beers. Like just be very careful. But like you think about like like a place that just rotates beer. Like they don't have a big, insane inventory, right? Like. Total Wine is just loaded with like tons of brands, like the gillion hundreds of brands. If I had to count at, at the public, which is a local grocery store, like um, your local, um, geez, your Stop and Shop, your Kroger, uh, your ShopRite, your Wallbound, I don't know. what It's all regional. Whatever your local Key Foods, your, 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 your chain Wegmans, your chain supermarket, is um, they're going to do a pretty good amount of volume, right? And they obviously don't carry much as something like Total Wine. So if I had to count on the shelf, they easily have less than 50 brands. Easily less than 50 brands, for sure. I want to bet money on that. But anyway, so, and they ideally rotate through beer pretty well. Like, you know, like people go to the grocery store, they buy, buy some beer. Like, I, I would, I'm actually honestly pretty surprised that this is three months old because like, I'm thinking like, like, I had to get to the store within a couple weeks. Like, let's say, let's give them credit and say, like, less than a month. Is that on the month? Is that on the shelf for maybe a couple months? I don't know. Maybe. But uh, Sierra Nevada is notorious or notoriously notoriously good about um, great uh, conditioning. Um, the beers are actually bottle conditioned, so there's a little bit of yeast. Uh, not noticeable, but just a little yeast to help scavenge the oxygen. Um, they have some of the, I mean... They're, they're literally the largest craft brewery in the country. If you want to include Yingling or Sam Adams or whatever, or a Boston Beer Company, you want to include Yingling, Boston Beer Company, whatever. But for pure craft, I, I, I'd say they are literally the largest craft brewery in the country. And they have all the great equipment, all the DO meters, all blah, blah, blah. So packaging is fantastic for them and uh, known from that. And, and they do the bottle conditioning. So um, cool stuff, cool stuff, cool stuff. Very excited to review these for you guys. Just chitting, chatting, shooting the shoot. And uh, until next time, guys, cheers. Can't wait to review these. Later.